One of the stories of the 2014 LC Wildcats has been trying to replace last year's American Southwest Conference Offensive Player of the Year running back Ryan Montague. To this point of the season, the Wildcats running game has been a bit inconsistent, but that all changed today on the legs of a freshman. The Wildcats coming off a big homecoming win over East Texas Baptist, trying to keep the momentum rolling against this Howard Payne team. Here we go, to the house, home three, one, two, three, to the house. Let's go, let's go. And LC getting it done early on the ground, specifically behind the freshman, Devin Silve. Cats starting out in great field position, and Silve helps them continue it as he would chug for 36 yards on the first drive. In fact, behind the Cats' big offensive line, Silv would account for 45 of LC's first 59 yards, this carry taking it down to the one-yard line. And one play later, it's Silv blasting his way in for the touchdown, and the Wildcats off to the quick 7-0 lead. You know, we had a great week of practice as a team, and uh, offense and defensively and special teams. So, you know, we were feeling good coming to this game. Um, first drive. Uh, we kind of went down the field pretty easy on them, so we knew we could do you know, mostly everything we wanted. And uh, O-line had a great game, get, breaking up holes for uh, Sill, and he you know, did what he was supposed to do, put the ball in the end zone. Howard Payne's Richard Young has been a gunslinger this year, but on this drive, Grayson Pilant stepping in front of his pass at the 10-yard line. He'll return it 23 yards out to the 33, one of a number of interceptions that will be coming for Young. They ran a lot of the same route concepts that our offense runs. Um, so I get to see it every day in practice, so I know where routes I can jump and where routes I can't jump. Um, so basically it was just a, a mirror image of our offense. After Howard Payne's defense holds, Young will be intercepted again. This time it's the junior safety Trent Hall as he takes it back five yards, giving the Wildcats a first down at the Howard Payne 20-yard line. It will take LC just three plays to score, and it's that guy Silva again, his second rushing touchdown of the game, putting the Wildcats up 14 to nothing early in the first quarter. Touchdown, Wildcats. Touchdown. Howard Payne would get a touchdown to cut it to 14-7, but then Young continuing to have problems with interceptions. His third of the game, this time C.J. Hawkins at the 15, takes it for the touchdown. Cats miss the extra point, but still lead 20 to seven. With the end of the first quarter, Young's nightmarish quarter is over, but starting the second quarter, it continues. This time it's Pilot again, as he intercepts at the LC 35, his 19 yard return takes it back into Howard Payne territory. That is the fourth interception of the game so far for Young. We just kind of understood uh, the concepts and the route concepts they were throwing at us. Um, and everybody pretty much just, just played their role and did their job. Grayson Pilot played tremendously, but uh, you know, I just uh, to, to play as well as we did against that potent of an offense is a credit to our defense and coordinators uh, Wallace and, and Charles for, you know, that, that's a team that beat a very potent ETBU offense, you know, two weeks ago. So they were four and three playing with a lot of confidence coming in. So I, I was just real proud of our guys. It won't take the Cats long to take advantage, needing only two plays. The first, this Shed Davis screen pass, which he takes for 18 yards from Melanson. And then the drive, capped by who else? Devin Silve, who takes the pass over the middle and does the rest, going 28 yards for his third touchdown of the game, and the Wildcats lead it 27 to seven. Coming into the game, Silve had just 30 carries for 194 yards, but a breakout game indeed, as he caps yet another drive here with a touchdown, his fourth touchdown of the first half, and that makes the score 34 to 14 Wildcats. This stuff, going through practice. If I got a great practice, I know I'm gonna have a great, great week, a great game that we're weekend. We, we've been seeing again flashes of, of Devin all year, and what what we saw him do in high school is pretty special. I mean, he he still uh, you know got a lot of room for improvement and should be a, a great back for the future. I think he's a fine young man. In the first half, the Wildcat defense would give up 292 yards but they force those four turnovers and as a result, hold a big lead at the break, 34 to 14. <laughs> 
to the start of the third quarter now. And again, the terrible day for Young continues. On the first drive for Howard Payne, he is picked off for an incredible fifth time. That's Ira Jewett, the Wildcats senior. And he sets up his team with a first down at the Howard Payne 31. Interception. And it will take the Wildcats only three plays, capped by who else? Devin Silve. Remarkably, his fourth touchdown rushing of the game to tie a school record and his fifth overall, giving the Wildcats the 41-14 lead. But the Wildcats well remember what happened a year ago in Brownwood when Howard Payne rallied and almost came all the way back to tie the Wildcats. And looking like they may try to do that again here, that's Kaysan Monteith as he takes the reception and goes 67 yards, only Bo Brewer's hustle able to bring him down. Monteith is actually Howard Payne's backup quarterback. Doing a good job at running back though, kicks this one to the outside and takes it in for the touchdown from six yards out. And the Yellow Jackets back to within 20, 41-21. Another player the Wildcats were able to get into the mix on Saturday was the big sophomore receiver Shed Davis. He'd been quiet to start out the year, but every game lately he's been awakening just a little bit more. Meanwhile on defense, the senior pilot with a greeting for Monteith, Grayson in this game would have 12 tackles to lead the Wildcats to go along with those two interceptions. And with 15 minutes left to play, the Wildcats continue to lead at 41-21. Mentioned Davis earlier, and what a game he would have as he goes up strong to make this catch, one of 12 he had for the game, totaling 136 yards. Coach has been getting on me a lot lately because I've been playing smaller, smaller than what I am. So I had to kind of show up today, dominate, and uh, pretty much help my team get a victory. As we talk about in practice, we just beg defense just to give us the ball back, you know, because we're going to capitalize on it. That's what I mean. It's a lot of competition in practice. So we, we compete every day, every day, every day. And then come game time, we just try to compete for the ball, you know. We got a defense that's ball hawks, a receiving course ball hawks, and we got a nice little running game. Uh, shout out to Devin Seals on that one, too. Speaking of Silv, this is the end of his final rush of the day. A 46-yard touchdown. And his fifth touchdown rushing of the game. Sixth overall for the freshman, who also had 172 yards on 21 carries. An incredible record-breaking performance. Some of the teammates was telling me about it, but I wasn't really paying no mind to it. I, was just, I just wanted to close the game and end it. We were just waiting for that right moment for Silv. We, we know... We, we knew once we got him, he was going to be something serious. We were just waiting for the month for him to crack open. And for him to actually come in this game and break a record as a freshman, yeah, that's a lot of accomplish. A lot of accomplish. I'm so proud of that boy. You know, I told him after the game, if you'll stay humble and hungry, it's kind of like Easton from last year. You know, the sky's the limit for you. And I think it really takes a lot of pressure off of Easton, when, certainly when we can run the football as effectively as we did today. While Silv had the game to remember with six touchdowns, Richard Young had the game to forget with six interceptions, the last of which coming there, Willie Smith, the freshman for the Wildcats. Even though Young threw for 360 yards and two touchdowns, those six interceptions were clearly the difference in the game. It also goes back to basically making him, making him run, throw on the move. Um, D-line was getting a lot of good pressure today and flushing him out of the pocket, so we just capitalized on, on some of his mistakes capitalizing on their mistakes and capping off the scoring. It comes when Austin Carline, the sophomore fullback, just bulls his way in on the screen pass, 14 yards from Alonson. Easton finishes the game with 256 yards throwing, and the Wildcats win this one big, 55 to 28, exactly the kind of game they needed heading into their final two. At the end of the day, I mean, we first we're playing for God, but then second we're playing for our seniors because uh, we want them to go all happy, go all victorious, you know, because this season didn't go as planned as, as we wanted to, but uh, we, we promised them we was going to finish strong. So, like I said, as our freshman running back to kind of put that on his shoulders and uh, do it for the seniors also, I mean, that, that means a lot. So, right now we're going to try to keep this victory going until uh, to pretty much the season over with. As the weeks go by, you know, we get a little more confidence each week, get a little more better with each other, knowing each other's uh, – what everybody's thinking on the field. So, uh, you know, next two weeks are big for us, try to send these teams away with a winning record, so. When we were two and four, this team could have went a lot of ways, you know, and, and uh, just, uh, you could see in those games that there never was any quit. And that's a tribute to our senior leadership. And 
they wouldn't let these guys in any way. You, you know, they go over there and fight their tails off against Merrihart and Baylor for, for four quarters, and, and that's what, what I said at two and four. I, I didn't in any way think our guys were going to quit, and it's paid off. One, two, three. With the win, the Wildcats are now four and four on the season, two and one in the American Southwest Conference. They'll have their long road trip in the conference next week when they travel to Saul Ross before coming home two weeks from today when they host Harden Simmons in their season finale. It looks like once again, second place in the AFC could come down to those two teams. Reporting from Wildcat Stadium, I'm Al Quartermont for Wildcats Media and for D3Football.com.